Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here, and I figured with the end of 2019, specifically the end of a decade, I wanted to do something special um, leading up to that, and I wanted to do some sort of look back, and there's going to be a couple videos on, on the next two days actually coming out just kind of showing you, and doing some, maybe some housekeeping before 2020 as well as just talking about maybe the future, as well as just some things that I've really wanted to to do for a while now and I'm finally gonna do that now so anyways this is something that I've been wanting to do I've been wanting to make this uh, list and I, I figured that uh, with the end of the decade I would sit down and I would look at the top 20 favorite sets or, or important sets to me and that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna look at sets from 2010 all the way up until 2019 that's what we're gonna do today we're just gonna sit down and we're gonna look at uh, a bunch of sets and I'm not gonna break them down uh, by favorites because that's really too hard to do what I did was I just went on brick set and I checked um, my inventory and I just went through and I went year by year by year and I just opened up tabs for the ones that I really want to talk about and uh, anyways everyone let's start off with 2010 there wasn't actually really too many. I, I'd say that, of course, they had an amazing theme that came out that year, which was Toy Story for the first time. And that brought a lot of, of really great sets and really great minifigures and everything. But the one that stuck out the most to me when I was looking at the grand scheme of things, it was definitely Woody's Roundup, which is, which is just, it's such a great set. It's set number 7594. And to me, I remember getting this for my birthday, and it was just it was just such a great set. I've always loved Toy Story 2. Toy Story 2 is my favorite out of all the Toy Story movies. So this one was definitely my favorite to be able to get Stinky Pete and Bullseye and Jesse and Woody already was in the other sets, but I just really love the set and I love play sets, which you'll see a lot of here on the list. But moving on to 2011 brought in a theme that I absolutely love and adore, and it was the Pirates of the Caribbean theme. And oh my goodness, my one of my favorite sets was the Isla de Muerta, which was set number 4181, and I just absolutely love this set to death. I think that this is this is really the pinnacle to me of some of my favorite um, Pirates of the Caribbean sets. I love them all. I'm fortunate to have every single set, but this one specifically, I love this scene as well. It is just one of my favorites. I actually, when I was younger, I even built like a big sort of, um, it was really, it wasn't the best, but I built like the cave itself a lot bigger than the actual set here. Um, and I really loved the, the movies and I really loved this set in particular. And I, and you'll see with a lot of these sets, I specifically remember when and where I was when I built them. So to me, when I look around in my room, which hopefully I'll get the room tour out by the end of uh, this year, and when I look around at um, the sets that I have on display, a lot of times I can remember specifically where I built the sets and at different like different places and different things. So to me, that that's what makes sets important, and that's that's what this set means to me. This next one, and that is the mill. And I think that this is one of my favorite scenes out of the movie. Dead Men's Chest is my favorite parts of the Caribbean movie, I think. And this scene in particular, I really love the fight, and uh, I just absolutely love and adore this set so much. I think that it is just it's really really. Um, creative like I don't think we've ever really gotten anything quite like this set and really I don't think like fighting wise and, and things like that like scenes from movies I think that it's also very unique in just the choreography between them fighting over the key it was just it was incredible I absolutely love it and then in 2012 of course most of this list is going to be superheroes but to me this one really sticks out and uh, it is actually set number 6857. It is the Dynamic Duo Funhouse Escape. And this set um, was a retail exclusive. And I don't think we had it here in Canada. I, I really remember the set. I remember getting it from the Lego store or ordering it online. And this is, of course, it, it came out later. I don't think it was with the entirety of the wave. I, I could be wrong about that. But uh, when this set came out, I absolutely loved it because they had this amazing new Harley Quinn figure as well as the Riddler minifigure, and um, it was just incredible. Like, I, I, I just love the design of the set, and I remember it sold out so quickly. Um, it was just, it was sold out right away, and I just think that it was so different. Like, you're getting, first of all, you're getting the Robin that was in a pretty expensive set before, right? He came in the back game. So to get five minifigures, and I, the price for this was $39.99 Canadian, so $29.99 American, and... I, I really love this set. This is one of my favorite DC s d Batman sets, I think. Uh, definitely. I think that it's just, it's so colorful and unique, and I just really love this set um, so, so much. 
And uh, of course, in 2012, when we got DC superheroes, it wasn't just, of course, Batman sets. We did get one from a very important DC superhero that we had all been waiting for, and it was Superman. Superman finally got his own set, and I love this set so much. The Superman vs. Power Armor Lex is one of my favorite DC sets. I just... It may not be the best looking mech, but to me, I remember playing with this so much when I was younger, and uh, this set came with Wonder Woman as well. So this, this to me was just the pinnacle, this to me was like, oh my goodness, the DC wave is going to be amazing. Every single year we're going to get some sort of set, and it's going to be like a Flash set or a Green Lantern set, and, and, and it won't just be Batman, and I, I was wrong. I love this set to death. I wound up going out and buying a second one, keeping it sealed, because I was like, oh my goodness, this set is going to be worth so much one day, because we're never going to get that Superman again, and we're never going to get that Wonder Woman and the Lex Luthor, and then Lego Dimensions happened, and they were both in that, and then Lex is still exclusive, but I still have it sealed, and I, I absolutely love the mech and everything, as well as just, I, I love it. I love this set, especially because uh, back then I was playing DC Universe Online and I was starting to play that, and uh, which I'm playing again on, on the channel right now on Ash and Flash Extra. So it was just it was just so much fun to reenact some of the missions and things. I I don't know, it was just it was just this is so nostalgic to me that set. And in twenty thirteen, this is one of my favorite um play sets I think ever, and this is the Batman and the Arkham Asylum breakout set, and it's set number 10937, and this is I think the best looking Arkham Asylum set that we've ever gotten. The, the, the architecture in this set is beautiful, it, it is just fantastic, and the minifigures here that you're getting are really really great as well. I believe that this was the first time that we got the Penguin minifigure, as well as the actual Scarecrow minifigure, that was the first time that we're getting it in the in this um, sort of rebranding, of course, for the DC line, and that's our first ever Harleen Quinzel minifigure as well. And to me, this was kind of based off of, I believe, Arkham City specifically when you're looking at that Robin outfit. So that was really great to me, and I just think that like the the just the builds here, the gargoyles, the just everything about this was so phenomenal. And I I wound up expanding upon this and building my own and everything when I was younger. And uh, we'll we're, of course Arkham is gonna pop up again later on the list. But in 2013, we also saw one of my favorite Marvel sets, first one on the list here. That's set number 76005, the Spider-Man Daily Bugle Showdown, and I love this set. It may have one of the worst jet builds ever made for a Lego set, but the minifigures here that you were getting are really, really great, specifically Doctor Doom. I'm really biased. I love the Fantastic Four. Still waiting on a Baxter building set with everybody in it, but to get Doctor Doom here, I was beyond the moon. Like, it was just, it was incredible. I couldn't believe it, but not just that. I love the Daily Bugle. Bugle, like to get that building and to get like the J. Jonah Jameson outside yelling on the TV, like that to me, this this set to me is one of the best Spider-Man sets. I really, really love and adore the set. And I was going through and I'm like, oh, okay, I've already picked a Marvel set. I'm like, I'm, I'll, I'll be good now. It's 2013, let's move on. And then I saw this set, set number 76007, the Iron Man Malibu Mansion Attack. Oh my goodness, I remember going out and getting all three of the sets the day that they came out and, and where I was building them and everything, and I just absolutely love, love, love this so much. I love this, uh, the build itself for the Malibu Mansion. It may not be as big as we wanted, but I, it was just it was just everything that I wanted in that set. I was just so excited for the movie, and it was just right after the back of the Avengers and everything, and I got all those sets when they came out as well. Um, and and they're good first sets for Marvel, I guess, but I really think these are better, and they're not necessarily my favorites. That's why I didn't mention them, but this to me, I was like all in for Iron Man 3. I was so excited. I was gearing up, and, and, and it wasn't necessarily the m most exciting movie that it was specifically with the mandarin and all that stuff but you know this set to me i was like oh my goodness the mandarin's in the set he's got such a cool looking design and and all that and and yeah but i still really love this set i think that it is really really great and of course we got one of the teases for the mark 5 suitcase there which was just it was just incredible. But uh, moving on now to 2014, and I was going through, and I'm like, this is the year of the Lego movie, and I absolutely loved all the Lego movie sets that I purchased and everything, but there was only one that really stuck out to me that's still on display or has been hugely expanded on, and that was the Cloud Cuckoo 
palace and I think that this is just it is one of the most colorful sets it's one of my favorite scenes that just make me laugh when I go back and watch the movie and I just I think that this was really great I remember seeing Unikini and just thinking that was one of the most random characters but I remember building this set and it was just so much fun all the colors and everything and it, it made me go want to go out and get a couple of these just to expand upon and anytime that I would I would be able to get like some sort of pink set or, or somebody was donating something and I was just like I'll, I'll take the pink bricks it would go to building cloud cuckoo land so i i'm really excited to to showcase that hopefully uh this year and uh, i just absolutely love this set it's so great and then of course with the lego movie i almost didn't include this but i i did need to mention it because this was the first ever minifigure series that i did ever actually go out and get the whole set for i've always loved the minifigure packs but i to me they've always been uh, a little expensive where i'd rather be getting a set perhaps um but now, you know, I, I have to. I, I feel like I have to be getting <laughs> the licensed ones specifically. They're amazing. And that's what happened here was I needed to get all of these LEGO Movie characters. And uh, I did. And uh, my dad and I, that was the first one that we ever sat down. And we were actually um, feeling through and everything. That was the first time that uh, like I had ever felt the bags and everything. I, I never did that before. So to me, this is really nostalgic and looking at this whole series and everyone that's in it. I, I absolutely just, I love this series so much. And uh, in 2015 now, we had one set that uh, I again expanded upon. That's normally a sign of like, dang, I love this set so much. I want to just expand it and make it even better. And and I just wish that there was more to the set. And specifically, I know everyone has complained and wanted a bigger version of this set. And it's set number 76038, The Attack on Avengers Tower. And I think that this set is really, really cool. I love the design of it. I love all the stickers. I love all... Uh, that's going on here like that it holds suits and different things and I just I think it is such a great set and I was so in for Age of Ultron with um, just having the broken Ultron there oh my goodness brings me back to 2015 with that movie and I just I love this set so so much then moving on to 2016, there was uh, one Minecraft set in particular, while the theme had already been out, there's one set that I absolutely love and adore, and it is my favorite Minecraft set of all time, and it is set number 21128, The Village, and to me this is just... This is just perfection. While I like to be able to build my own sort of stuff in Minecraft, of course, and I like doing that with some of the LEGO Minecraft sets specifically, to me, being able to build the village hut and the, the different places like the blacksmith hut, the well, the farm in particular, and, and just the, the watchtower, the library building and all that stuff, I love this set. It is my favorite set. It is just the way that they just captured it all in this I just think is amazing while everybody complains about the price I don't care this set is literal perfection for me I think that it is just really really great and uh, it is one of my favorites uh, of all time also in 2016 we saw a minifigure series that would really I think change my life and that was the Disney minifigure series and uh, I say that because really if it wasn't for this series I wouldn't have wanted to go on to make a second, uh, a sequel series, and then of course, which led to just literally all of this. So this series is really what I owe it all to. I remember going around and trying um, to get the whole series and different places had already sold like an Ursula and I think somebody else I was still looking for. So I had to keep going around looking for Ursula. I'm like, this is the biggest bag. Come on, how can I not find her? And, and then I wound up... Uh, Finally, finding her afterwards, but I, I love this series so much. I, I think that I just love Disney, of course, from like Kingdom Hearts growing up on that and just watching Disney movies when I was a kid. So to finally have all these characters in, in, in minifigure for me was just beyond, beyond amazing. I couldn't believe it. And uh, again, if it wasn't for this series, like this channel and everything wouldn't exist. And uh, in 2016, we also had... I think the best Spider-Man set of all time and it was set number 76057 the Spider-Man Web Warriors Ultimate Bridge Battle and this set is just what I think Marvel needs to go back to I think that this is such a beautiful set do an expansion on it you literally still can I think that that would be absolutely amazing I would be beyond excited if they did that imagine a sequel to this set I mean they've done it before um, but it's, I mean 2016 was a little bit back but hey do it. Come on, Lego. Uh, but yeah, this set is amazing. I 
think that this is just the architecture of the bridge, the different play features in the bridge. There's just so much going on in the set. And of course, the minifigure selection that you're getting in here is amazing as well. It was the first time we got Scorpion, the best Green Goblin minifigure we've ever gotten. Craven for the first time, a couple of other spider friends and different things. Aunt May for the first time in the Marvel Superheroes line. A New York Taxi, which to me just reminds me of the classic Spider-Man sets. So to me, this set is just, it is amazing. And the things that people did with this set, buying like four of them and combining them all were just, it was incredible. It was, it was absolutely amazing. And then uh, in 2017, we saw the Lego Ninjago movie. And that gave me, I think it's my favorite set. I remember just building this and it was just so much fun to build. And it is set number 70620 and it is Ninjago City. And I just absolutely love the architecture in this set. It is just amazing. Some of the play features, like just the, the, the subtleties in them are just, it's so great. Like the crab flipping as well as the elevator in the back. And there's just, there's just so much in the set. The sushi table, oh my goodness. But the architecture in this set is amazing. The price for this set is amazing and it is I think it's like the fourth biggest set of all time now. I think it got bumped. It was third when it released. And just the minifigures that you're getting in here, they're just so detailed. All the stickers that you're getting in here, the the references to other Lego themes in here are just amazing. And of course the Ninjago docks just added to that. And this to me is just such an amazing set. I absolutely love this set so so much. The puffer fish Oh my goodness, I, if I just, the cherry blossom, oh my goodness, the cherry blossoms. But if I, I gotta move on, cause I'm just gonna keep like going. And uh, of course, I, I should have mentioned this prior, but the Lego Batman movie brought two of my favorite sets, I think, for the past decade. And one character in particular we really needed to get, and that was set number 70904, the Clayface Splat Attack. Whether you like his design in the movie or not, I don't care, I love it. I love Clayface so much as a character and as a Batman villain. So to finally, 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 finally be able to get him in, mini in, in Lego form was amazing. I know that we had been waiting, of course, from 2000 and, and what was it, 8 when the video game came out and he was in that as a minifigure. But this to me is really, really, really cool. Um, I still think that we need a better version than him than the one that we just got recently, but to me this is just, this is amazing. I love the dripping effect and everything going on here. I love the the, the, the switchable hands and everything, the stud shooter hands. It is just really, really great. This is such an amazing set, and I can't believe that I was able to get a couple of them for like six bucks last year or something. So that was incredible, but moving on. Another one that I still see on sale, my two favorite <laughs> Lego Batman movie sets, and I still see that this one in particular is still on the shelves, and it's set number 70912, and it's Arkham Asylum. And I believe that maybe it's not the best looking Arkham Asylum, but this is the, this is, it's incredible. The detail in here is beyond anything else that we've ever gotten. Like, just look at all the stuff on the outside. All of the different containers, the 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 metal detector, it's amazing. And the minifigures here that you're getting, look at all of them in the jumpsuits. This is incredible. The price for this, like, I don't get why this wasn't picked up more. I think that this is genuinely one of the best sets. The Phantom Zone Projector, that GCPD car, Aaron Cash for the first time, that Barbara Gordon minifigure, a better looking Harleen Quinzel, two GCPD officers, the, the, the two face here. Like, oh my goodness, I absolutely love this set. And of course, on the back, it's it has so much more detail with all the different cells. All the cells have a little reference in them. It is just such an incredible set. I'm really, really sad that I don't think this set got as much love as it should have. Uh, but moving on, in 2018, we saw set number 76108, and it's the Sanctum Sanctorum Showdown. While Infinity War, I think, is a little bit overhyped now, especially after Endgame, I still really loved the, the wave of sets, specifically this one. I think that this is amazing. This is the, just, it just put the other Doctor Strange set to utter shame. The Bleecker Street build there on the side is fantastic. The Doctor Strange Sanctum Sanctorum is amazing. And then to go above and beyond that and give us like Peter Parker's apartment above a pizzeria was just amazing. Like it was just, I couldn't believe this set when I first saw it. It can close up, it, like the little corner build here. It's just amazing. Like the architecture here looks like something from Creator Expert, but it's here in a Marvel set. 
and I think that that's just really something that needs to be mentioned more. And the water tower, just the detail, the the fire escape, like it is just, it is such a beautiful build. Not just like, just like, oh cool, it's a playset, but the detail in the set is absolutely amazing. I think that this is such a really, really great set. And we're getting into it now. We're almost done now, and we've got two left. And it was really difficult because I was looking at this past year's sets and I'm trying to think of which ones were the best and I just want to mention just 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 a couple okay just a couple uh, this isn't officially on the list but just a couple that I want to mention Central Perk Cafe really really great Steamboat Willie I really loved as well the Disney minifigure series 2 was really great some of the the 20th anniversary Star Wars sets being able to get the dropship again for the first time for me was incredible. The Slave One, that's a really amazing Slave One. The New Millennium Falcon from The Rise of Skywalker is really great. Of course, from Harry Potter. I didn't mention Harry Potter just because it's not necessary. I love the sets and everything. It's just not something very nostalgic to me when I like look back and I remember building all the sets. So really, I almost mentioned, I almost put the Rise of Voldemort set on here, but I don't think uh, that or the uh, the Ultimate Collector of Batmobile, some of the Toy Story 4 sets and things, they don't live up to the two sets here when I look back on the past year. And uh, we're going to talk about the Iron Man Hall of Armor set. And I know a lot of people complain, they're like, it's overpriced and blah, blah, blah. I really, really think that that is amazing. It is such a great set. The minifigures that you're getting in are just amazing. Finally getting the Mark V after I don't know how long, the Mark I suit, like, it is just such a great set, and I think that it's just so powerful now um, because of Avengers Endgame, of course, and to see, you know, the end of Tony Stark and everything in the MCU, I think that it just, it it's just such a great set. I think that it's, it's a good time capsule for me when I look at, in front of me right now, I'm looking at the Iron Man Hall of Armor with all of the Iron Man suits that I've been collecting since 2012. Like, that's that's to me that's really special to give me this set to actually display not that i have to go out and make myself or or, or figure out because the batman suit display that i'm trying to make for the bat cave isn't working and you know to have something like this that just looks like it from the movies there's something really special to be said about that i think that it's just it's really well made and i think that it's really great and i want to go out and get a third one because i'm excited to see where the future for iron man goes you know with lego and getting a new suit already and uh yeah and the venomized one coming later this year i don't know i it's just it's really crazy it was voted toy of the year or something recently so yeah, it, it's really, really great. I really love that set, and uh, now the Avengers Endgame sets are going on sales and everything, so now's the time to st stock up on them. But uh, there is one other set from 2019 that to me was really special, and uh, I really love the Lego movie too. I think it's the movie that I've seen the most in theaters, surprisingly. <laughs> it just kind of happened that way. I don't know if I meant it to be, but I really, really love the Lego Movie 2, and I'm really disappointed that it didn't do as well as I think that it really deserved. I think it was a phenomenal sequel. And uh, anyways, you know, Welcome to Apocalypseburg is amazing. And I know everyone's going to be like, Betty Space Squad, and I want to build a spaceship, and all that stuff. Like, chill, all right? Like... I'm really going to let the oxygen out of your tank here, okay? I don't like that set. I think that it's really overhyped. But, uh, but anyways, anyways, anyways. This set is really great. The, the Just the designs of this is, it is amazing. I think that it looks really, really beautiful. The Statue of Liberty build is just, wow. It's really great. The Coffee Unchained. All little details and references. Again, I think that the Lego movie D2Cs, the references that they have in the sets are phenomenal. Like, it's just, it's really, really great. And all the minifigures that you're getting in here are just amazing. Of course, my favorite out of the whole thing here is the Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad, which to me is really special. I've talked about it before. They're filming it in Toronto, so I got to see some of it being filmed with the Joker and Harley driving down on Gotham City with the Batmobile chasing and all that. All one minute of the movie I got to see filmed over hours and hours of <laughs> time. Uh, but uh, I, I really love uh, this set as a whole, though. I think that it looks really, really great. The detail, the texture. I wasn't a fan of like the apocalypse sort of look going into the movie, but uh, it really paid off, I think, with this set. And I think it's really, really detailed. But anyways, everyone, I want to hear your thoughts. What were your favorite sets 
of the decade. And I guess I technically said what were my favorite sets of 2019 um, just briefly there at the end. Uh, but they don't make the list in the grand scheme of things. And um, I was it was it's it's been a really important and, and hard decade, I think. You know, I think that Lego really helped me get through a lot of stuff. Uh, specifically the Marvel sets in particular, um, a lot of stuff going on during the time of their release. And, um, so yeah, looking back at the stuff, it was, it was hard because I remember a lot of the memories and what was going on at the time, but you know, it's important, um, to, to be appreciative of how these sets have, uh, helped me. And, uh, of course, you know, like I wouldn't be here with, without some of these, like it's, it's really, it's really incredible. And I think that that's that's a testament to what <laughs> that's a testament to what uh, what Lego does, and uh, it's not just it's not just for kids. It's it's not it's not at all. Like it it's it's more than that. Like this is I say I'm 20 plus on streams and things when people ask me, and uh, you know Lego's been a part of my life for for as long as I can remember, and um, and these these set on my on the list here they mean a lot to me. And, um, I, I'm just, I'm really appreciative of you guys and all of your support. And, uh, I'm going to try and do a different video talking about what I have planned for 2020, but you guys have just, you guys have just blown it out of the park. And I, I, I can't believe that I'm in this position, um, to be able to make content for you guys and to make a living off of something that I just absolutely love and adore and that has and it's just it's always been there for me and and it's just brought in so many of my favorite things to life over the past decade that i never thought would happen like having a dc line getting a flash minifigure all those things that was something that i only like dreamt about and to to to, to get marvel sets and and different things like that it has just been it's been a hard decade but it's also been a really good one Thank you guys so much, um, I can't put into words how much you guys mean to me, but, uh, anyways, I hope that you did enjoy this video, and, um, I hope that you all have a great day, I will see you all in the next one.